Got some more stuff. And uh, there's a couple items in here that uh, I forgot to show in the last video, which is okay, I guess. Um, so I'm including them a part of this load. I'll point them out when I see them. Let's uh, get this, all this stuff unloaded and we'll go over what we got. It's a total of four vacuums in this load. This is a basically a Hoover T-Series, but it's the commercial version, which uh, came with rubberized wheels, a uh, three-prong or three-prong cord, but that's been cut off by the tweakers. Very common. And obviously it's bagless. Kind of on the fence on what I'm gonna do with this thing. Might throw a cord on it, might not, don't know yet. Because uh, this one over here is the bagged version for the consumer. And uh, this one has a, well, it's basically a cloth belt, permanent belt. You should still change them. Um, but these are a little bit different, especially because they're bagged. But uh, we might uh, compare both of these and make some sort of video about them. But uh, they should work okay. I know I already took the bag out of this one before I picked it up, but I've actually been wanting to pick one of these up for a while, and thankfully I found one, first one I've ever found. This is a Kenmore, I believe uh, this is based off, maybe, maybe made by Panasonic. I know it's obviously the same design, I forget um, how long Sears and Kenmore had that, let's see. Manufactured for Sears, Railback & Co. USA. It doesn't say who made it. I'm assuming it's Panasonic. But these are decent vacuums. I believe this thing turned on. I've had this for a while. I just haven't really messed with it or tried to get it working. Um, I know that these older Kenmores are getting harder and harder to find parts for. This is missing the bumper. It's also missing uh, a couple other smaller things. This is broken. I could probably fix that with a screw, um, but it's missing the uh, cord hook. So I'm gonna have to figure out something else that are, that'll work. Maybe I can pull one off of another vacuum, swap it on, who knows. And we got one of my favorite kinds of vacuums to pick up are these Oryx. What I love about these is how simple they are, how cheap parts are. Um, for most people, they're perfectly fine, especially for low pile carpet. Um, some medium pile carpet they perform okay on. But I've always had a soft spot for these. Um, and it's kind of nice that even still, they're still man, they're assembled in the USA. Let's see how long that lasts. But of course, both of these two, the tweakers cut the cords off, standard. At least they didn't destroy the uh, stress relief and then i found a couple bags and boxes of uh, random hardware all sorts of different stuff um, normally when i find stuff like this i don't sit there and go through it at the curb if i'll just do like kind of like a cursory look over see what's in it and if there's a few things in it that i want i'll just take the whole thing and just throw it in the car or the truck and uh, be on my way i'm not going to sit there and waste my time trying to sort through and pick through you know, small little piecemeal things like this. Um, but this, I saw this, this is scrap. So that'll go in one of my scrap bins over there. There's a few other pieces of scrap in here. Um, wire bundle there. And we got a O2 sensor, it's probably bad. But there's a Holly two barrel carburetor kit in here. Um, some other smaller things, a lot of aluminum. Some of these pipe fittings these are steel got some pulleys just a whole bunch of small stuff um, this is probably trash got a charge cube for a samsung cell phone so now we're getting to uh more of the meat and potatoes of this video i also picked this up i normally don't pick these up but i saw that this thing was complete and uh, probably just needs new fuel lines and maybe a new diaphragm and it'll probably be fine. Um, so if I could get this working, definitely make a video on it. Uh, probably sell it for 30 or 40 bucks working if I can get it to work. 
these things are really kind of a crapshoot. Um, it seems like the more modern two cycle stuff that you get on the cheap side that's made for the consumer, it's only designed to last for, you know, one, two, maybe three years. And then it's basically just disposable. You throw it away, buy another one. So you're starting to see a lot more people now that are just buying electric stuff and battery operated stuff, which is fine. Um, because in my opinion, this two cycle stuff is, uh, stuff on the cheaper end is just nothing to write home about. Um, I've never been a fan of these cheaper uh, tools. I mean, they definitely have their purpose, but it's not something that I would go out and actually buy brand new. Same goes with this. Now the story with this is I actually got a mower from this guy and uh, him and his wife were sitting in front of his house and I asked him, you know, just to be courteous, if he minded if I took the lawnmower that they had just put out and he said, yeah, sure, no problem. And then he was like, well, do you want a weed whacker too? And I was like, well, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not gonna really tell him that majority of the time these really aren't worth fixing and I might just scrap it, but you know, it's kind of nice to do that for people. Um, but then he was like, well, I've got all these attachments with it too. And all this thing needs apparently is new fuel lines that he literally said he was just too lazy to open the cap up, stick some needle nose in and fix the fuel lines. So no big deal there, but it's a two cycle Craftsman weed eater. It does have compression. There you go there. 33 cc again these are really nothing to write home about but what kind of irked me is that he gave me all of these attachments with him he gave me the edger the tiller um, a straight shaft and cur curved shaft weed trimmer heads and then this piece which is uh actually really a really nice hedge trimmer i was really kind of surprised with the quality of this one um normally a lot of this stuff is really kind of cheaply made but this is actually not too bad um, so that kind of uh, tickled my fancy a little bit and definitely if I can get that weed eater running and I've got all these attachments for it I can easily turn around and make quite a bit more money than I would normally selling them all together so that's uh, something you guys will probably see another video on and then I picked this up. I couldn't resist because I saw that this was a solid steel hardware or chemical box or something. Um, it's branded U-Haul, which is kind of cool because it's it looks like their vintage logo. I don't know how old this thing is. I would guess maybe late 80s or early 90s, somewhere around there. Um, but I just thought this was really cool. I wouldn't sell this. This is something that I would keep and find a use for somehow, somewhere. Um, definitely smaller stuff like my two cycle parts and pieces that I have in bigger uh, containers on my shelf could easily fit in here, but we'll see. Just needs to be bent back here on the handle. No big deal there. And now for the last part of this video, we have a total of three lawnmowers that I picked up. And again, this is all stuff that I picked up from the curb. This was all thrown away. We'll start with this one first. Now you guys have seen that I've done a couple videos on these particular Weed Eater branded lawnmowers. I only picked this up really for the handle and the engine. These decks are some of the lowest quality decks that I've ever personally seen or messed with. Um, they typically don't sell well. I usually don't keep them and this one I'm probably going to scrap. Of course, I'll be keeping the wheels too, but that's a side point. Um, but these decks, they're just really low quality, really thin steel. They're really flimsy. They've got their purpose, um, but as far as my purposes of reselling them, it's just, they're just not really going to return much money. And besides, I've got another deck that I could swap that engine on um, that takes a bag and it's in much better condition. But... This is exactly how I received this. I almost didn't pick it up because I thought there was, uh, you know, I thought it was in worse shape than it is. And you guys can see the information there. It's a 2008. It's kind of amazing. It's, it's only, well, I guess it's kind of old now. 12 year old lawnmower. 
but normally, like I said, I, I keep these handles because of the blade handle uh, brake stop, the handle itself. Um, this thing, I think, is trashed. Yeah, it's it's Dunskis. So that's, that's trash, but everything else on this is salvageable. Um, there is no no blade on it and it looks like yeah that's it no blade so no big deal there and then we've got this Honda which the guy was outside putting stuff out in front of his house and again courteous I asked him if he uh, you know was throwing it away and if I could take it I'd uh these are kind of, these are really nice lawnmowers. This one's uh, definitely been used quite a bit. Um, it still runs. I think it's missing a governor linkage or something's not adjusted correctly down here. Um, because when it runs, it, uh, it wants to run really high. So I might have to adjust the governor a little bit or, you know, move the spring back, see if that makes a difference. I don't think that it will. Let's see if that'll do anything. It's actually still got gas in it. So like I said, it runs a little high. I just need to adjust the governor or something on it. We'll uh, kind of mess around with it and see what we can do. I didn't even check, see if they were running an air filter. It's actually not bad. Not as bad as I've seen some of these. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, plans for this Honda. I'm probably gonna fix this one, tune it up and keep it. And I'm probably going to get rid of, where is it? I think I put it back in the shop. Um, but I have a Craftsman self-propelled that you guys have seen a couple videos on that I've done. And uh, I'll probably get rid of that one, but keep this Honda. Overall, it's in pretty decent condition. Um, power wash, and, uh, you know, it's it'll look a lot better than it does now. It definitely needs an oil change. I wouldn't be surprised if they never changed the oil on it because it is uh, pretty black. So we'll change the oil, probably throw some synthetic in it, and uh, we'll be good to go there. But I love these Hondas. They're, uh, I've never had any issues with them. Some people have, but I mean, every single one that I've worked on or everybody that I've talked to that's had one has loved them. So this will be a fun project to kind of refurbish. Um, definitely see what we can do with it hopefully those wheels aren't too expensive if they're not i'll buy some new uh, treads for it or new wheels but i kind of think the whole thing's going to be expensive so now we have this craftsman which it looks like they've changed out the wheels on i'm not sure actually if those are the original wheels or not i don't think they are um Looks like they had an issue with the gas cap, probably not venting, so they decided to uh, fix it for whatever reason. Um, this thing still does have compression. They broke the blade brake cable, so they zip tied the flywheel. And it's got compression. It's got a good amount of compression, actually. I don't know if there's any gas in it or not. Um, but it's nice because this one's got the primer on it. This one will probably clean up really well, especially with the pressure washer. Um, some of you have been asking about my steam cleaner. And uh, I definitely do plan on getting some stress test videos on that thing, so to speak. Um, kind of where we're going to be cleaning off something like this. And actually, I could really use that thing on these mower bags and kind of see how they turn out. 
normally I just power wash those and that cleans them up pretty good too. So I did go out one more time, found this, I just plugged it in, it works perfectly. I'm gonna bring this into work with me. And uh, this morning I also found a fairly nice rolling office chair that was good enough to bring to work as a toolbox chair. So I brought that in, it's just some of the pleather was uh, peeling off of it, but for the most part it's fine, it's still comfy just kind of doesn't really look all that well then I found I guess we can start with this engine it's a Briggs & Stratton twin off of a Craftsman um, there was some parts there from the Craftsman mower the deck was still there and so was the hood but I didn't bother with picking those up um, all I took was the engine and uh, the mounting bracket as well as the exhaust which I have in my scrap metal pile so I don't know what's wrong with this thing um, honestly I have no clue I haven't even checked it to see if it turns or not probably does and it's probably seized up but I figured this would make an interesting tear down video and plus this thing still has a bunch of good parts on it so you know plenty of stuff to list on eBay then I also found one of these this is a Hoover Spin Scrub Power Scrub Deluxe 50. Uh, I normally don't pick these up, but this one I saw that it had all the attachments. I have one of these at the house that I bought brand new um, that I didn't get all these attachments with it. I just got the hose and I think the smaller one, but I didn't get this one and I didn't get that one. But I have no idea if it works or not. It is complete. It doesn't look like it's damaged at all. So I figured I could get you guys a tear down on one of these. I did kind of do a tertiary check on YouTube just to see what other people posted up about these and how to tear them down. They're really common. So I'm kind of surprised that there's really not that much in the way of, uh, you know, really tearing into one of these. So maybe I can get you guys a video dealing with this. Still in good shape. And then I've got two and a half cases here of fluorescent light bulbs. Both of these were not opened. This one was, and these are still good, the owner told me. So um, went straight to LEDs. So these already have a home, actually, and uh, they're already going to be put to use. I'm not selling these. I'm giving them to somebody else that I know that needs them. So that was easy enough, no big deal there. These are like $30 a case if you get them from Lowe's or Home Depot. So there's about, about 80 bucks worth of light tubes here. But hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more.